This afternoon, we're going to be looking at the Tiger 2020 Pro voice network security, and we're going to go through looking at how we can create alerts, calendars, and so on. So voice network security is used for detecting fraud, hacking, misuse, or proactively alerting by a set of defined conditions. One thing to note though, is that voice network security is not part of your standard license. So if the icon is not available in your iTiger or on your server desktop, then you'll need to speak to your Tiger account manager or the vendor that looks after your Tiger system. The session will include common voice network security alerts, profiles, and how we set them up. So we're gonna look at setting up specific call alerts, understanding the company calendars, looking at alarm notification groups, so how we get those alerts delivered to you, how to log on, understanding profiles and limits, and looking at the scanning of those alerts within the voice network security server. So without further ado, let's go and start having a look at the fraud client. Hopefully on your iTiger or on your Tiger server, you should have a Tiger 2020 fraud client icon. It'll be a man with glasses and a hat. To log on, simply double click. You must type the right username and password. And it will then log you on to the fraud network security client. So the first page it takes you to is the company calendars. So company calendars allow you to add new calendars at the top. So you click add and you can call this say 2019 for example. Within 2019, what you can then do is configure by using your legends in the top right hand corner here, what a public holiday is and what a company closure is. So to set a public holiday, you click so there's a red box around the yellow and you specify when there is a public holiday by then clicking on the calendar. If you have a specific company closure, so this could be that maybe your factory is closed at this time, what you can do is you can then highlight through here where the company closures are on those specific dates. And this just allows you to then alert on when there's public holidays or when there's company closures or when you would expect people not to be in. So you would want to alert if somebody made a call during a company closure or during a public holiday. Once you've made changes to your calendars, there is a save button in the top right hand corner or you can click file and save. They both do the same job. To add more calendars, click add. To change years, you simply click on the selector tool here to select more than one year. Once you have set up your company calendars, it isn't a requirement, you don't need to set them up. It's only, as I say, if you want to alert on public holidays or company closures. The next thing you need to do is set up an alarm notification group. The first part you need is a group. So to set this up, simply right click in the top window and click add and give this a description. Now, when you give this a description, you then need to define whether you would like this group to be alerted every time something is breached, every 10th time something happens or every 100th time something happens. So in my instance here, I want to be alerted every time something happens. So I'm going to specify all limits that are breached. If you did select the 10th breaches, it would send you number one, number 10, number 20, etc. You can also format the alert that is going to come to you. So to do this, click on the formatting button. And in this window, then you can format how you would like your alert to be sent to you and what information you would like it to contain. So if you're doing an incoming call breach or alert in here, in incoming, it would say specific call alert, the name of the alert and the word breached. You can then free text type in anything else you would like in here, or you can go to the left hand side and select say timer breach. So in the subject title, it will now say specific call alert, the name of the alert and the time the breach happened. In the body of the email that's going to come to you, again, you have these extra pieces of information here. What you can do then is you could type in say Moz or mean opinion score and add in mean opinion score. You could say the word this was the caller and you could then add in say the word user and it will then populate that information for you. 
So you'll need to go through each tab, specifying what information that you would like on your alert when it is delivered to you. So it may be on outgoing calls, you would like the trunk group path, the trunk code, etc. in here. You can add in all of these fields here. You can also do the same for profiles. Again, you just need to specify through each tab the information you would like contained in your alert and in the body of your email when it's sent. So once you have completed how you would like your alert sent to you and the information contained in there, just simply click OK and then click Add. Once you've created the group, you now need to give the specific people that you would like to alert. So to do this, highlight the group at the top. In the bottom window, right click and click add. Most of you will then get a information message pop up here to say that some of the results will be disabled. These are for things like SMSs and pages, etc. If you don't have the ability on your voice network security to do these, then they will be grayed out. So we can then type in the description of who these people are. So let's say the telephony support group. You can then either choose from your existing emails here, or you can type in an email address of who you would like to send it to. And in the bottom window is the email address that you would like it from. So in my instance here, I'm going to send it from telephone support at tigercoms.com. If you do want to send it to an SMP server, obviously you would specify this. If you'd like a visual alert, you can do using an application called Tiger WinPop. Or you can get it to print to a printer. Obviously, if you get loads of alerts, it will waste paper printing them. So the most common one that we will use is email. So I've now clicked add to this group here. So every time I assign this group now to a specific call alert or to a profile and limit, it will now email to this email address here. You can add more people in here by clicking add and adding a different set of alarm notifications here. Or you can right click, go to properties and you can add in more here. To add more people, you can add a semicolon and type more email addresses in there if you wish to. There is also a test button available. So if you would like to test your alert, you can click test and it will send a test email to confirm that the email is working. Again, once I've made any changes, I then need to click my save button in the top left or click file and save. So now let's talk about how we set up alerts and what type of alerts we can set up. So I'm going to look at my specific call alerts here. Specific call alerts are for alerting on a defined set of rules. For example, calls that cost more than five pounds, calls that last longer than one hour, and maybe calls that are to a specific set of destinations. So to create a specific call alert, you right click in the box here, or you can click on add a specific call alert here on this little piece of paper there. And you then need to give it a description. So in my instance here, we're gonna start with calls over five pounds. So once I have a description in here, I now need to specify which alarm group it's going to go to. So I'm going to choose the one that we configured earlier, the telephony all alerts. So that will send it to the email address that I specified earlier. Now what I need to do is I now need to specify what I would like in this alert. So I can go through my categories here on my left hand side and I can choose one of these options. So in my instance here, I'm going to choose cost and I'm going to say, Activate the alarm groups for the telephony all alerts when these call types has this cost criteria. What we do is we click on the word call types and we specify which call types we would like. So I'm going to specify outgoing and tandem calls where it has this cost criteria. So I click on cost criteria and I say cost is greater than or equal to five pounds. If you run in different currencies, 
it will be the currency that you're running in. So it may be $5, five euros. It depends on which currency that you're running. So if I click okay to that, it will now say in words, activate an alarm for this alarm group telephony all alerts when an outgoing or tandem call has a cost greater than or equal to five pound. So as soon as a user makes a call that costs greater than five pounds, it will then send an alert to that alert group. If you're happy with that, click add and then click save. To add any other new ones, you simply click right click again, click add, or click on the piece of paper up at the top here to create another new one. So let's look at calls over one hour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a group this time. So I'm going to say I only want it for my mixing and blending department. So here I need to specify who I'd like it to go to. So I'm going to say telephony all alerts again. I'm now going to specify talk time because I'm interested in here calls over one hour. And now what I would like to do is I only want it from a specific set of extensions here. So again, make this bigger. I only want to activate this alarm when one of these extensions, so I now need to specify my extensions. I can either come in here by clicking on change selection and selecting my group. So I'll go to my demo view and I want it on mixing and blending. They're the, the extensions that I'm interested in. So when I click OK to that now, it will say that I only want it on my department mixing and blending machine operator. I could specify my range of extensions. I could say greater than or equal to or less than or equal to or general extensions. So these are comma separated values. So you could say I only want it on extension one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it would only monitor those three extensions. But in my instance here, I'm only looking at this department. So I will click OK to that. Then I want to say what call types do I want it for? So I could say all call types. So I'm interested when anybody makes any call type that lasts longer than and the talk time criteria here is greater than or equal to no days, but one hour. So this will then look at anybody in my mixing and blending department that makes any one of these call types and has a talk time greater than or equal to one hour. It will now send an alert to my telephony all alerts group. So if I click add to that and then click file and save, that will now save that alert. So let's just set one final one. If I can right click and click add. In here, I can give this a description. We'll say calls to premium rate numbers. We'll give the alarm group again, telephony all alerts. Then you could do it on dialed number. So I could say I want to see outgoing calls or tandem calls to UK premium numbers, for example. So anything that starts 09. If I wanted it to international numbers, I could do 00. Or if I wanted, say, 118 numbers, I could do 118 star. But my example here, we're going to look at UK premium numbers. And you can add in any selection of these numbers. The more you add in, the more specific it will be. So it may be you want dialed numbers to 09 with a cost of X amount and a talk time of X amount. So the more fields you add in, the more specific your alert becomes. Again, once you create yours, simply click save here and it will then save those changes. To make sure that your alerts are working, at the bottom of your screen, there'll be a monitoring button. You click on this here. You then have a scanning option. So the scanning option will show you that your alert is now saved and how many times it's been breached. So if it does, get breached, it will say that it's been breached one time, two times, etc. 
It will then, on your alarming tab here, show any alarms that it's set off and the subject and the details of that alarm. And in this window here, it will show you when it last scanned a call and how many calls it's scanning for either an extension number or a trunk group and when the last call was scanned. You can also change your view as well so you can look at your departments to see how many calls have been scanned for those departments and when the last calls were scanned for those departments. So that was all covered under the monitoring button which is available at the bottom here to tell you all the information about your specific alerts. Now we've covered off our specific call alerts. What we can now do is look at profile and limits. So in these examples, we're going to look at getting an alert when the company has spent more than £100 on calls to international numbers. So we're not looking at a specific alert. What we want to do is profile how much our company spends normally and then maybe look at setting an alert to say if it exceeds our normal spend, send me an alert or you can set specific values to be alerted on. So as I said, our example will be calls to international numbers when the company spent more than 100 pounds on those. So to do this, we come into our profile and limits and we come into our top box and we click add. By clicking on add, this will now create a new wizard for you. So the first screen asks, which view do you want to set a profile limit alert on? So in my instance here, I'm going to go and choose my demo view and I'm going to select all my departments here or this department here. Or I can come in my classic costing view and I can say, right, all of my CDR sources here. I want the total amount of cost for all of my departments. Once I've selected this, I can then click next and I'm interested in outgoing calls and my total cost. Now, there are lots of different alerts in here and you can set up more than one if you wish to, but in my instance, we're looking at the total cost of outgoing calls. If you wanted tandem calls included, you would also come in here and select tandem calls. So once you've selected which items you want to be alerted on, you then click next and you give this a description. So I'm going to say international calls over 100 pound. I then click next. Now what the system can then do is profile what your average spend is to start a starting point for you to choose whether you would like to be alerted on a particular value. So. To do this, you choose your from date and to date to create the profile. So what it will do is go and look at how much you normally spend over that three month period on calls to international numbers. Or you can say, I don't really care. I know what I want to set these values as. So you can tick this to create profile without historical data. So this means you have to manually fill in this information. So I'm going to say create my profile of that historical data because I'm not interested about how much I've spent in the past. I know I want an alert when we spend more than £100 on international calls. Now, when we look at the profiles, how do we want to look at the data? So do we want to be alerted for the whole week by weekends and weekdays, by weekends and individual weekdays or each day of the week? So I'm going to say I want to be alerted each day or I want to be able to choose each day of the week here. You can also process all occasions or by type of occasion here. So including those call types we set up in our calendars before. If I then click next, I can then choose what days I would like a breakdown on. So maybe I want to know if I've spent more than £100 on international calls between midnight and 8.30 and then in the morning, then in lunch, then in the afternoon and then in the evening. So there may be five different alerts set up here. So I could say in early hours, if we spend more than £10 on international calls, send me an alert. In the morning, if we spend more than £50, send me an alert. £50 at lunch, £50 in the afternoon and then maybe £10 in the evening, send me an alert. Or you can do it on full days 
per two hour or per one hour. So in my instance here, I'm going to do it per 24 hours. So in a 24 hour period, I want to know if we've spent more than £100 on international calls. I'm going to get this information message to say that I don't have any historical data to work on. Therefore, it's going to skip a section for me. This is where it goes and calculates what your average spend is. And I can now go and choose what call categories I want to be alerted on. So I want to be alerted on international, but now I've seen it. Let's also be alerted on premium. So I want to know if the company spends more than £10 on premium calls. I then click next. You can't change any of these settings here. So we just click next again. We then say who do we want to be alerted if those values are met. So I'm going to say my telephony all alerts. And it's then going to give me all the information that I've set up in my wizard. And I'm then going to click generate. What this now does then is on the left hand side. It then says that on a Sunday between midnight and midnight, all my outgoing calls here, my international outgoing calls, I want an alert when we spend £100. So I can type in the value here, £100, and click OK. So now, whenever we exceed the limit of £100, it then sends an alert. On premium, I could set this to £25. On a Sunday. Now, maybe on a Monday, I want a slightly different value. So I can go to my international calls. And I could set this to £250 on a Monday. But my premium is again, I want to be alerted whenever we spend £25. With my tandem calls, I could say I'm actually interested when we start spending anything over £25 on tandem calls and £5 on premium calls of tandem calls on a Monday. On a Tuesday, maybe we're not so busy. So Let's go and set this to £100 again. So I want to know when on a Tuesday, if we exceed £100 on international calls on outgoing. And again, £25 on a Tuesday for premium calls. And you'll slowly work your way through these options here, specifying your values. If you have got historical data, then it will give you an estimated value in here to say roughly that is what you spend per month or per value that you specified in your wizard to go and calculate. So again, if on average we spent £30 a month on there, it would say £30 a month is your average spend. Therefore, if you're setting your limit at 25, you may get a few alerts. Once I've set up and gone through and specified all of my values that I want to be alerted on. Again, I then click save in the top left hand corner here. And I can go back to my monitoring, my scanning, and I will then see my profiles in here. So you'll be able to see those scanning. Again, if you do want to add more profiles and limits, you just come back to here. You right click and add. You choose, so maybe I want alerts on a specific channel group. I can come in here, I can choose my channel group that I want to be alerted about, click next, and say that maybe I want alerts on their total cost or on their trunk seizure count. So maybe you would like to be alerted when your trunks get to 28 out of your 30 available channels on your ISDN 30. So there are lots and lots of different options available. The best thing to do is have a look at some of these, select the options, and when you go to next, it will give you what values you can be alerted upon. If at any point you find that you're getting too many emails, you can come into here and you can change the parameters. So you can come into here and maybe change the values, or you can disable that profile and limit by unticking the box and clicking save. To reactivate it, you tick the box and click save. That is the same for the specific call alerts as well. These can be enabled and disabled simply by unticking the box and clicking save, and you will no longer receive any alerts 
for those specific alerts that you've set up. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn about Tiger 2020 and its other features, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.